Hey everyone, I'm Dave and welcome to my channel. Today's topic is a fun one. It's the third viewer requested topic that I've done in a row and I'm just so pumped about this. The fact that you guys are requesting specific ideas like this and I'm able to help you out with your projects is just wonderful. I mean, it was really the goal of my channel to help you guys grow and learn as creatives. To do it on projects that you're specifically interested in is just fantastic. Anyway, about today's topic. Um, this viewer requested the ability to take Google Map data and transform it into something beautiful. Unfortunately, Google doesn't distribute their map data freely, but I found a source that publishes their maps um, under a Creative Commons license. So you're able to use it in your creative work as long as you publish your work under the same license. So let's, uh, let's go take a look in Illustrator where I take some maps modify them to make them clean and modern looking and put them into a poster. I think this is a really cool project and the kind of thing that you'd be proud to hang on your wall, either to honor the places that you've been, the places that you're from, or the places that you live. I think it's really cool and I'll definitely be printing out one for myself. So let's get started. All right, here we are on openstreetmap.org. I'm gonna put a link in the description where you guys are gonna be able to find the same site. Now, you can search for a place by city name or you can use your zoom function and just zoom right into the area that you're looking to, to work with. So for today, I'm going to zoom right into Toronto. And you can find a spot that looks good and you can go from here. So the, the website, will export an SVG file for you if you go over to this share menu. It's a right click to get it to become active and you have to be careful that you don't lose your zoom position. You can set a custom dimension, which will give you a bounding box that you can adjust to select the area that you want to download. And you can change your format to SVG. And fair warning, this will take a little while, but if you click the download button, it will download an SVG for you. Once the file is finished downloading, you should switch over to Illustrator and open it up. It's an SVG file, so Illustrator will do some work to convert it for you. And again, full disclosure, this will take some time. All right, the maps that I've opened up have had this error before and I haven't been able to figure out exactly what it is, but hit okay and should be good. Okay, here's our map. And it, it has a clipping mask applied to it. Sometimes it has caused an issue for me, um, either when copying and pasting this into another document or even just opening it. Sometimes it opens up blank. But you'll know if you switch into outline mode with command Y that there are in fact elements here. So if that happens to you, what you can do is click and select and then pop over here into the transparency palette and hit the release button here to release this clipping mask. So the clipping mask has been released and we've ended up with a bunch of transparent elements here that we can delete, we don't need them. So use your direct selection arrow, A on the keyboard is the key shortcut to pull that up and try to select as many of them as you can without getting any of the actual information from your map and then hit delete twice to clear them away. And that's looking good. So the other thing that you probably wanna delete are these labels, the text that names the roads and the areas and whatnot. Now, normally what I would have done was I would have clicked on a letter like this red one here, for instance, and I would have gone select same fill color. And I would have expected that to pick up all of these letters, but it took me a while to figure out that the letters are in fact symbols, so they don't behave the same way. So what you can do is pick up the first one, navigate to the bottom, hold shift and click on the last symbol, and then press the delete button, and then press delete instances here. And again, this is gonna take a while, so let it, let it process. Hopefully your machine can handle it. Okay, now that's processed. 
you'll see in a bunch of places there was these transparent outlines of text left behind and the best way I found to remove them was to pick up one and go to select same appearance and all of the labels that matched will all be selected. So you have to repeat this process for the different types of labels that were on the map, but this one should go pretty quickly. So an easy way to determine if you've deleted all of those text-based labels is to switch into outline mode, command Y, and the text will become more apparent when you're in outline mode like this. So command Y, switch back and forth. Okay, so now with all those labels deleted, it's ready to start adding a little bit of style to the map. One last thing that I wanna do before I start is I wanna delete some of these boundaries. So these fall in the lake in this instance, and I think depict different zones, and I don't really wanna include them. So what I'm gonna do is use the direct selection arrow, and I'm just gonna click and drag over a section, and I'm gonna hit delete twice. And I will pick up these boundaries in case they were grouped, the direct selection arrow will select things inside of groups. Okay, so there, those boundaries are deleted. Now we're going to get to styling it. So Command A on the keyboard will select everything. And then you can go to your color palette and we can turn all of the fills off by clicking on this icon down here. So it's now none. And we can change all of the strokes to black. And there are a lot of the functionality of the map is stripped away, but we're left with a pretty cool looking piece of art. Now I find a lot of these strokes are too heavy. Now it would become quite tedious to go in, find the strokes that are all weighted at a certain weight, select them all. You can do them this way, select same stroke weight, and then reduce them. If everything was the same weight to start with, that would be quite simple. But in this case, there's a series of paths that are all overlapping and they're all sized differently. So there's a neat trick that I will do sometimes when I want to scale all of the strokes proportionately. So I'm gonna pick everything up, Command A, and I'm going to go to the scale transformation, so object transform scale. And I'm gonna make sure that scale stroke and effects is turned off. So the stroke is gonna stay at the same width, the same size that it currently is, but I'm gonna increase the size of my artwork. I'm gonna go up maybe 300%. This is a trial and error. Um, function at the beginning and hit OK. Again, this might take a while, so let's let it process. There we go, that was pretty quick. And now what's happened is your artwork has scaled up, but the strokes have not. So the appearance of the stroke is as if it's thinner. And now you can select everything again, go to Object Transform Scale, and you can scale it back down. For argument's sake, let's go down 50%, but this time we're going to turn scale stroke and effects on. And now when we make that reduction in size, the strokes will, will stay at that same proportion that we chose, that we liked. Okay, so here's the basis for our, our map poster. Now that we've got it all styled like this, let's select everything with Command A, copy it to our clipboard with Command C, and then create a new document with Command N. I want my poster to be a 24 by 36 inch poster. It will make the map quite large and you get to see a lot of the cool detail in it. Because I'm gonna be printing it out, let's go CMYK and hit create. So here's our 24 by 36 inch canvas. You can set up guides if you'd like, so I do that by using the rectangle tool, M on the keyboard pulls that up, creating a 24 by 36 inch rectangle that matches the size of the canvas. And then I'm gonna hit Command R to pull up the rulers and I'm gonna drag out a set of 
vertical and horizontal guides to the center, and then I'm going to delete this rectangle here. I'm going to create a new rectangle, so hit M on the keyboard, and Option click in the middle, so that places our center point of our rectangle in the middle. And let's create um, a 22 inch wide, let's make a square to start with, a 22 inch by 22 inch square. Hit OK. Now it's in the middle, but I want to move it down. So I'm going to hold Shift to constrain this slide down, and I'm going to position it about there. I'm going to go into my color palette, turn off the fill, leave the stroke on, and then I'm going to increase the weight to maybe two points. I'm then going to offset this path. Object, path, offset path, and I'm going to offset it by half an inch. This is going to be the clipping mask that I use for my map. So now I'm going to paste the map in with Command V, and I'm going to position it where I want it to fall inside of that frame. Now, I'm also going to scale it down. Make sure that you have the scale stroke and effects option still on so that this leaves the stroke at a proportion that we like. Because of the detail in this map, a lot of our movements and transformations are taking a while, so you have to be a little bit more patient with them. Select the frame that you want to use as your clipping mask and copy it, and then paste in front so you've got an extra copy of it. And then I'm going to use my key commands again, Command, Shift, Square Bracket, to the right, the right square bracket. And that will bring it to the front. Alternatively, you can go object, arrange, bring to front. Now, that means that this will act as the clipping mask when we select, so keep this as your selection. Select your map by holding shift and clicking on it as well, and then hit command seven to make a clipping mask. And that top square has now clipped the map, but the map still, the map data is all still there. So if you hit Command Y, you can see that the clipping mask has just hidden it. And because we had made a copy of that frame, it remained also here with the black stroke that houses everything. It's in there. So I'm going to undo that transformation and be good to go there. So now I just added some simple typographic elements in. I typed out the name of the city that the map was from, so Toronto. And I changed it to a typeface that I'm using all the time now in my projects, Bison. And I went with Demi Bold. I then scaled it up to a spot that I liked. And I also pulled up the type dialog box. So Command T pulls that up. I also tracked out the letter spacing to make this a lot airier. So I went down to 200. And I centered this up and transformed it again. The whole time that I'm doing this, I'm holding shift to constrain it. And there's our place name centered underneath our map. The next thing I did was drag out a copy. So I held down option and shift to constrain the copy coming off of here. And I changed our typeface to light. I reduced the point size significantly. So let's go down to 72 point. Then I went to Google and I searched for Toronto's GPS data. Toronto GPS location. And I found in here the G GPS coordinates for Toronto. Selected it, copied it to my clipboard and pasted it here into my smaller bit of type. I thought it was a nice little detail. And then I just adjusted the position of everything. Picked it all up with the selection arrow and slid it down. And there we go. It's a really cool graphic representation of a place treated in a way that I think would look really cool as a poster on your wall. So that's how I put this together. Keep in mind that the files are quite complicated, so it will take your machine a while to process it, but hopefully you'll end up with something that you really like that you print out and, and hang up.
So there we go. That was how I took the map data that's provided and modified it, cleaned it up a little bit and have put it into a modern looking poster design. I'm hoping that this was what the requester was looking for and I'm hoping that the rest of you out there that are watching this are finding it useful. If you've stuck around to this point in the video, I'm going to ask that you do all those things that YouTubers ask for, which is to leave a comment down below, give the video a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. The support really does mean a lot. And uh, outside of that, I'm hoping that you'll tune in to see what I've got in store for you guys next. So hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Have a good one.